Yo guys, welcome back to Humble Performance. This is part two of our Haltech Elite series that we're doing. So I just want to do some quick housekeeping tips. I've actually already got the car started and running. So I just made sure that was before I actually shot this part. But the first thing I want to bring up is that this is a, uh, the point of this video is one, if you know me, I'm not a professional wiring specialist. I'm not, it shouldn't even be turning wrenches to be entirely honest. But the biggest call that I get the most on the phone when people are talking about technical things and not understanding is a lot, a lot of people are intimidated by wiring. Um, and you know, I understand there's a lot of things, a lot of things can go wrong when you wire, but why I wanted to make this video to show is that wiring isn't as intimidating as a lot of people make it out to be. Um, and I just wanted to show you that if I can do it, honestly, anyone can do it. Like I said, I'm not follow, I'm not bolo, I'm not Alex, I'm not in the shop all the time. I'm always doing this stuff. So if I can do it, you can do it. So in this video, what we're doing is going over the tools you'll need, um, how to modify an OBD1, basically using the like, scrap parts from an OBD1 ECU to make a jumper harness. Um, I want to also add that if you're doing an OBD2A or OBD2B car, you can actually forego almost all the steps in this video actually and take an OBD2 jumper and cut the wires at the OB1 ECU plugs and actually pin those with the Haltech pins and pin them in the ECU. I might do that in another video to show you guys, but if you understand the logic of how this stuff works, um, you should be able to figure it out from there. But I'm also going to include this, is that in the description below, I'm going to include the write-up, the technical write-up that I'm going to make of this exact process explaining how to do it, um, as well as the pinout and everything you'll need for the ECU. And the cool thing with what I'm doing here is that the pinout I'm going to give you is universal to any ECU. So I saw in the last video, people were mentioning other cheaper ECUs like Speedduino, Max ECU, ECU Masters Black, all that stuff. If you're wanting to build a jumper, you can do the exact same technique as long as you look at the pinout and compare them together. You can put it together and use the same thing and build your own harness. So I'm going to leave all those information you need down below. I found out plenty of things doing this myself. Um, I didn't include all of them in the video, but like all the tips and stuff that I've learned for the most part actually in the, in the write-up as well. Um, but yeah, like I said, the big thing for me is to teach you guys that it's not as intimidating as you think it is. And secondly, I want to also add this as well, is like I said, I'm not a professional wiring expert. So if you are, and you know way more than me, because there's a ton of people that do, um, if you see something I'm doing wrong or want to give me tips so I don't melt a car to the ground, please leave it in the comments down below. It'll help out everyone and help me out because I want to learn more about this stuff as we get into it because electronics like it really cool. But like I said, the point of this video is to show you guys that it's not as intimidating as you might think that it is. I'll give you the tools and tips you guys need to do at least get one running. I got one running right here. Works great. Um, and then from this video, what we're going to do is going to go after this one is actually showing tuning the car. So hopefully I can give you the guys the full spectrum of what's going on. But that's all I got for today now, guys. I've already shot the video, like I said, so I'm going to go back two days now to when we started this video and we'll get to it. So let's go ahead and get started. Cool. All right, you guys, right here I have most of the tools laid out that you're going to need for this job. Um, but I just got the main ones here. I do still need to relay technically, but what you're going to need are pretty straightforward. I assume most of you guys don't have one of these, but it's a really good idea to invest in one. This is an open barrel crimp. Get these off eBay or Amazon for like 20 bucks. Um, if you're not doing professional wiring and not wiring a ton of harness every day, you don't need the expensive one. I mean, you get the $20 one. Um, but these things on average about $10, $15, $20. Uh, the real ones about $150, $200. If you're doing a ton of, ton of uh, wiring things, highly recommend obviously investing in tooling if you're trying to do it professionally. Um, but for a hobbyist level job, you only need a cheap set. Um, these obviously won't last as long in that environment for a high end grade. So these are just cheap $20 Amazon ones. Um, here I have wire shippers, just like AutoZone brand, like, you know, 10, 15 bucks from AutoZone. You probably already have these in your toolbox. You also need something to cut with. Um, I just have these right here. These should work fine. Once again, probably already have those in your toolbox. Um, you need the Haltech pin kit right here. If you buy the 550 from us, it will come with this connector and the pins. Um, these are what you'll need to wire up all the wires, you know, to make a jumper. So you'll need these. You need this pin out if you don't already have one. This is what will come with all the kits that we sell. Um, if you need this, shoot me an email. We'll have these here. And then I have over here an OBD1 EC. You won't necessarily need that. What we're really needing is the actual pin header itself, which I'm going to show you guys how to extract one from an OBD1 ECU. Um, but if you don't have one, you can buy these separately for $25. You'll also, of course, to the wire wiring harness, you'll need wire. I just have this laying around. This is actually higher grade wire, which you'll probably need. Just need some wire for that. Um, 1820 gauge probably be your best bet. You need a soldering iron and solder, you know, 10, 20 bucks from your local auto store. Um, and that's all I need for this tool. So what we're going to do, and also need a, sorry, a 40 amp relay as well. Um, but what we're going to do, guys, is go through this. I'm going to show you guys the logic of removing um, this out of here first. And once we get out of that, we're actually going to go from there to understanding the pin out and understanding what pins go where to crimping the pins, get them onto the actual harness itself, um, and then uh, soldering everything up. So let's go ahead and get to you guys, and let's get started.
All right, guys, so this is actually attempt number two of this. I'm actually doing this on the fly, trying to figure it all out. Um, so, like I said, we've got nobody wanting to see you. I've taken the board out of here. Um, so if you look underneath here, you see that there are four screws connecting the OBD harness to the actual board itself. On some of these, I just noticed in the last one I just did, the, uh, the screws actually have solder all the way over the top of them, so you'll need to desolder these. If it is like that and you have the desoldering tools, go ahead and desolder. If you don't have the tools, you can buy these headers separately for 25 bucks, but you can get the desoldering tools pretty cheap. Just get like a, like a solder sucker, like a solder vacuum, whatever. It's also a good tool to have long term. But what I'm gonna do guys is take these screws out of here so we can pull this pin out. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do this um, because like I said, this is the second time I've done it. I made a mistake and now I'm gonna show you guys how not to make the same mistake I did. So what I'm gonna do guys is take these four screws out right here. So we're gonna take these out right now. Oops, just drop that completely. Press down pretty hard because these things are still soldered to the board. You gotta break the solder off the bottom of the board. So I don't know if you guys can see this right here. So you'll see that they are still soldered. So you gotta press down pretty hard and turn pretty hard, but this board is being sacrificed. So don't worry about the board. You're not gonna hurt its feelings, it doesn't matter. So I'm put it down in here, press on it pretty hard. Make sure you don't strip it out as well. Press down on about as hard as you can and then turn it. And you'll see the thing turn, it'll break the solder at the joint itself. So that'll come out there like that. Go to the next one here. Press it down really hard, turn it, crack that solder, it's off. Just like that. So now this board here is completely disconnected from here entirely. So what we're gonna do guys is originally I think I had these as the snips. I found out that these work a lot better. So you want these smaller ones here so you can get in between each individual wire here. It's gonna be a big thing. What you're gonna wanna do is cut it at about where it bends at 90. So we're gonna have straight pins coming out. We're gonna cut it right where it bends at the 90. Uh, so you're gonna bend these out here. And once these are done, we're gonna bend these all the way back. And I'll show you why in a minute because this is one of the mistakes I made. So we're gonna cut these right here at the 90 spots right here. So if you guys see here, we're gonna cut it right, right at the, right before, honestly, right before 90, so it's about as straight as possible. So I'm gonna cut it right there. Boom, just like that. Cut this one. Then we're just gonna do it all the way down this row. And then uh, we'll bend these, the, the pins that you cut back right after that for, I'll show you why in a minute. So we're gonna cut this out right now. Looks up here so you guys can see it even closer. Right here. Cool, so what I've done now guys, I've cut every single one of these across the top, right at the 90. Don't cut it, if you cut it too close, you won't have enough meat to put the wire on when you wire this thing. So make sure you cut it at the 90. Um, and then from there, what we're gonna do guys, we're gonna slide a screwdriver in here. And we're gonna pull all of these back. Pull them all back, where you cut them at the joint. You can kinda see there, I'm gonna pull all of these back. Pull them all the way back to the board. All the way back. You'll see why in a minute. So we're gonna pull these all back. Don't, like I said, don't worry about the actual board itself because it's done. Like it's, You're not repairing this thing, it's dead. So don't, have to, don't have to be gentle. I'm gonna bring all these things all the way back to the back of the board. So if you look here, I put a screwdriver in there. They're all bent all the way back there. So now we have a separation between here and there. I think you guys kind of see what we're doing now. Let's got these back here. So what we're gonna do now to cut these bottom ones, we can cut them right here now if we wanted to from the back. So I can go now to the bottom ones and cut all of these out because I didn't have access to them before I put this down, so I put them back. So I'm gonna cut the bottom ones. I'm gonna cut the bottom ones at the very the base of the ECU itself so I get as much meat as possible for when I go to wire this stuff up. So I'm gonna go through here now. So you can see right here, the bottom pin. I don't know if you guys, I'm trying to get you guys a good view here. I'm just gonna go down to the bottom of the pin and cut. There you go, just like that. So I'm gonna go all the way across the bottom there and then from there, this thing will be free. I'm now cut all of them. The thing is free from the board. Now you'll see we have a nice straight line here. You guys can see that, I don't know if it'll focus. You got a nice straight line here of the top and then the other ones are all bent to the 90 there. So what we can do now is we can bend these all up and then now we have a nice straight line but I think I might leave them down, maybe not. I'm gonna bend them up right now actually. I'll bend them all up um, and then we'll have as a nice nice amount of meat to, to wrap the wires on and solder them on to these things and then uh, Get them all soldered on. So I'm gonna show you guys how to select the pins, know which pin goes where. Um, so let's go ahead and bend these up, and then once these are bent up, we'll go ahead and get to it. And then you can throw this shit away, you don't need it.
Okay, boom. Just like that, guys, we've now bent all these up. Obviously not the absolute prettiest, but you guys get an idea. The goal here is to get enough meat on these so we can solder wires to them. Um, so this is gonna be the plug-in point where we're gonna plug in our harness to the ECU itself. So this is basically what we're gonna do is build now, build a jumper between this pin that goes to the ECU itself and this. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. So let's go ahead and uh, pull up the uh, the pin out that I have here and we'll go there and I'll explain to you guys how to figure out what pin goes where and we'll go from there. All right, you guys, looking at the pin out that we have here, we're gonna need 25 wires to run everything all together. So what I have here, guys, is a spool of wire. I'm gonna cut one wire here, and the goal here is I'm gonna cut every wire mostly to the same length. It's not gonna be exactly perfect, but I'm gonna cut all these wires, 25 wires, to the exact same length, and then from there we're gonna strip them all already ahead of time, and then uh, we'll go ahead and start doing the pin out and go from there. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so you guys, so now I've got 25 wires ready to go. We don't, to be fair, we'll probably need a little bit more, so I have a little bit more saved up because we will need to wire the VTEC solenoid separate. It's gonna be running on a relay off ECU because ECU only does send low sides, so it only sends ground, so we have to run a relay to run that ground signal to a 12 volt signal to activate the VTEC solenoid. More on that towards the end here. What we're gonna do, guys, is actually start taking these wires now. We're gonna pre-terminate them for the ECU itself. So what I got right here, guys, are the pins from Haltech. Pretty simple, you just take them off the thing right here, and we're gonna do is strip the wire down just a couple little couple millimeters. What we're gonna do is lay it down in the pin itself. I'll see if I can show you guys here. I'm gonna show you guys how to use these Molex pins if you haven't already as well. So that's on there as well. I don't know if you guys can see that. You're gonna to wanna to sit that in there. We're gonna have the insulation sitting on the back ones there. I don't know if you guys can see that. The insulation will sit in the back and the conductor, the metal part will sit in the big one. Now what you guys will do is we'll take those strippers that are sorry, not strippers, the crimpers I was talking about as well. These stripper crimpers right here. You're gonna take them. We're gonna take the wire here and put it in the appropriate gauge. So you're gonna put the wire on the, the V, it's like a V shape, you're gonna put it on this side where it's pushing towards it. And what it does is it actually pushes it up towards this and it curls it back in onto the wire so it actually secures it. This is how all the OEM ones are done. So we'll put it in there just like that. We'll put it in here, make sure everything's lined up. And then from there, we're gonna push on the crimper and crimp it. It's gonna tuck the wire up in there nice and tight. The wire's in there good. So you're gonna pull it, the wire doesn't come out. Like I said, you're gonna leave the insulation back on this back feed. Now we're gonna crimp the insulation itself onto the wire. This is the uh, the strain relief for the wire itself. So go ahead and put that on here. I'm using 20 gauge, I'm using 20 gauge uh, stripper setting. So I'm gonna go on here and then set this right here like that. Crimp it in. And now the wire is grabbed on with strain relief. It's ready to go. You guys can see that, pass the pull test. So now what we can do now is put this into the actual pen connector itself. Um, rather than going through all these doing the individual, I'm just gonna show you this one, and then you're just gonna repeat this process over and over and over again until we get it done. So, what I'll do now is show you guys how to actually depin and repin the Haltech harness, which is, this is the big reason why I love these the most. What we're gonna do here is look at this connector here. There's this big white line here. You're gonna pop this open. Pop this open right here on the bottom. You hear it click, it's open, the connector's open. So this is gonna be A1, the first one uh, specifically. So what I'm gonna do is go here on the connectors themselves. I don't know if you can see it, they're actually labeled 1, 10, uh, 18, 26. You can actually see which side is which, know which one is one. So I know this one's one right here on the top left. So I'm gonna pit this right in here. It literally just slides straight in, straight in. And you hear it click once it's in and then it's good. It's in there, ready to go. You can see it now in there, it's in there. So when I'm ready to finish this, I'll click this here, click it down. The pin's locked in, it's set, that's it. So. What I'm gonna do now, guys, is go through this whole pin out here. I look at each individual one of these pins, figure out which one's which, and then from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a pin in each one of these individually until I have a whole harness with all these in there. So once they're all in there, we'll go from there, we'll start wiring into the back of the OBD1 connector itself. There's obviously, there's several ways you can scan this, is why I'm gonna do this for now. Do like this, and uh, that'll be it. So let's go ahead and get all the pins in here. I'll check in with you after I've done all of them this way. And then once that's all set, we'll be good. I'm gonna do every single one of them except for the VTEC. So let's go and get those done. Okay, so right now we're in the process of soldering all the wires onto the back of the actual OBD1 ECU jumper that we pulled. It's taking me a little bit to do this. Like I said, I'm learning this on the fly, trying to figure out how to do it. Um, so I've been working on a technique that makes it a little bit easier. I was looking at soldering ECU or header pins and things like that. So to kind of figure out where we're at. So right now where I'm at, I'm gonna break it down. If you guys remember in the video that Alex made of uh, wiring ECUs, explaining the pins, um, if you look at the upper row, it's gonna be odd, so one, three, five, seven, et cetera, et cetera. And the bottom is gonna be evens, two, four, six, eight. This is the A plug, the B plug, and the D plug. So what I'm doing now is I'm looking through 
the actual pinout here. And the last one I just wired was the VSS. So what I'm gonna do now is go to the TPS, which is gonna be on this one on the on the Hall Tech. It's gonna be pin 14. And then if you look on the OBD1 line here, it says it's gonna be on D11. So what I'm gonna do, guys, is actually go here. I have these all pinned in here, but I'm taking them out. I just did this so I can keep track of what everything was. I'm just gonna go to the D14. And once it comes out of here, you gotta redo it all over, all over again. So one, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I'm gonna pull the 14 wire out of the harness. 14 wires out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip the wire here and we're gonna pre-tent it. This is what I found worked the best. I'm sure there's a way that works better. I just don't know. I'm completely ignorant of how they do this um, entirely. So I'm just figuring out as I go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this wire here. I'm gonna tend this with solder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my solder iron right here. I'll put some solder on the iron itself here as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tend this wire. So what I'm gonna do is run the wire up and down with solder here. I recommend also wearing gloves while you're doing this because the wires, you're gonna be holding hot wires for a bit. Since I'm doing this on camera, it's a little harder too. We're gonna to do this right here. pre tend this wire. So it's got a nice coat of solder on it. Just kind of see there, it has some solder on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's gonna focus, it has some solder on it. So this is pre tend there's solder already sitting on the wire. Um, the big problem is that you don't have three hands, so you can't really hold things and do stuff at the same time. I'm gonna make sure this is tend just a little bit more, just a little more solder on there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna find the pen, which again is uh, D11. So I'm gonna go to my ECU here, A, B, D. So I'm gonna go over here on this side, going from uh, right to left, we're gonna go to 11. So it's gonna be one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, which would be this wire right here. So I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna also tend this one too. I can get anything on there real quick so I can mark it so I don't forget. I'm gonna put some solder back on my iron. One second, we can zoom this in real quick here so you can see it while it's on the table. It's a lot easier to do while it's on the table than it is while holding it up. Once I'm gonna find D11 over here. See it here, D11. So, on the D plug. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven is right here. What I'm gonna do is add some solder to that actual pin itself. We're just trying to get a little glob on there popping off of the solder. So I'm gonna go here. Just get something on there, anything at all. Cool. So what I've done now is I've tend the wire and I've also tend this pin. So you're gonna see right here, once the camera comes into focus, if it does, you can see here there's now solder on D11. What's on there? So what I'm gonna do now is take that wire that I've taken here. Like I said, it's good to have gloves for this because it gets hot. Um, so I'm gonna find that wire again, wherever I just did it, right here. D11, which is right here. Put some on here to hold this thing down. It's right there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to heat up the solder on that D11 pin. I'm gonna slide the slide the wire beside it and it's gonna melt that pretend wire we have there and it's gonna melt them together and hold them together. So I'm gonna go here, like this guys. Then we're gonna melt that solder that's already on that pin that we just did a second ago and hold it close to the wire. And it's going to melt the solder on the wire itself to the pin. I slide the iron up just a little up and down. Let's make the joint. Now those two things are now soldered together. See that? There's a joint there. Probably not the best. There's sure, I'm sure there's a better way, but this is the way that I've got it. Joint's now soldered together on there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna insulate this. So I have my heat shrink, which I think I forgot to say at the beginning, you'll need heat shrink as well. Got my heat shrink here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my heat shrink to length. I got the uh, double walled with the glue on the inside as well. Just as a heads up, I mean the heat shrink's not super expensive. Slide it on down the pin where it's good. And once it's on there, I'm gonna go ahead and shrink it up. Ideally a heat gun, but this is all I got right now, so I'm just gonna use this lighter and get it all heated up and shrunk on there, or as I say, recovered on there back to its original size. And there she goes, she's on there, it's good to go. So now we'll go to the next pin and do the same thing for the rest of the pins until all the wires on here are soldered. There'll be a couple splice, I'll show you how to do that in a second, and we'll get to that.
All right, you guys, so we're starting around the final corner. What I've gone ahead and done now is every single one of these wires is now soldered to the actual pen itself. I did leave some of them open, the specific right now, I haven't done the VTEC, and I haven't done the powers and ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain that part real quick while we're here. So if you'll look here at these, these actually have uh, three separate ones between the five volt power and ground. So this five volt is gonna be your five volt power supply. It's gonna go to the MAP sensor and the TPS, because those two need five, five volt power. Um, this is your power ground, so these are actually the grounds from the battery to the ECU, and then these are your logic grounds or your sensor grounds, um, which are actually voltage reference based off the ECU. So these actually need to go to the sensor grounds in the ECU. So that's going to be the A26, B2, D21, D22. So we're on 11 to these four, we're going to run 10 to these three, and then we're going to run nine to these two. So I'm going to show you how to make a splice between these two right here on the five volt, and then hopefully we can go from them. That should teach you everything you need to know for that part, and then there'll be one more part left on the uh, specifically the VTEC setup. So we're going to go five volts, it's going to be number nine. So I've been deep pinning this thing as I've gone. So this is number nine here. Take number nine. Done. Nine is out. Uh, so we need to split this into two separate wires. So what I'm going to do is take a little extra wire here that I have left over from the side here. So I got this. What I'm going to do is going to measure the links up to the same exact spot here. Might go a little bit actually shorter than that, but I'm going to actually shorten this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my strippers. I'm going to make a strip in the middle of this specifically. Um, so we'll do that real quick here. This can be uh, 16. Ideally, what you'd be using is you'd be using open and barrel crimp and actually would splice it in here with using a barrel crimp, but I know not everyone has that equipment. So we should use solder here on this one. So I'm actually gonna twist this over here. The goal with this stuff is you wanna make a good mechanical lock. This wire is not the best for doing that, honestly, but twist it on there. That's not a good one, I'm gonna redo it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this on here nice and tight. You basically want the wire to actually be on the wire tight, like super tight, like, it shouldn't be able, honestly, it shouldn't be able to come apart by hand by when you twist it together. Um, the solder is there not to actually lock the two things together. The solder is there to join the connection. You want a strong mechanical lock between the two, the wire and the actual, uh, between the two wires specifically. If you don't have a strong mechanical lock, the solder isn't gonna do a ton um, to actually pull it together. So this isn't the best, but it'll get the job done. Tied up nice and tight together. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna saw these together. Um, and then I'm gonna put heat shrink over them and actually lock these together. And after that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a length here, I'm gonna cut these down to the same length on the side. So, got these two together. Make sure, like, this wire is now the best wire for what I'm doing. I should be using a open barrel splice or a crimp and crimping these together. Um, since it's not a motorsports application, I'm gonna be, you know, driving crazy or vibrating a ton. I don't think we're gonna need that too much, but um, if you have a little cheaper wire that isn't necessarily this, like some uh, copper plate wire of some sort, this should go a lot easier. This is not the best for this. I'm gonna twist these two together. Um, and I'm gonna solder them together right now. All right, so you guys, so now the harness has all the wires. Right now it looks like spaghetti. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back through this pen out and then find every wire and round it back to the ECU itself. So I'm just gonna go through every single one individually and get it all on there. And then after that, uh, the harness is ready. We're gonna do the VTEC right afterwards. I'm gonna just double check everything else works first. I'll show you guys how to set this up. So let's go ahead and get these all pens set up. Let's get to it. Okay, so A12. What I'm doing, guys, as I'm going through this, I'm actually gonna check off physically on the list as I go so I know which ones I've done. So I'm gonna go map, it's gonna be D17. So this is also a way to check your work. D17, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. 17, what the fuck is going on? See, I can already see right now looking through this pen out that I'm missing D17. So there's no D17 pin on here. So I'm just go through all these pins and find out which ones are missing, find out where they're allocated to, and then by process of elimination, figure out where I messed up. So this is the guess and check setup. So this is good here. So we have the third one, and we're going to go all the way down the list and get them all taken care of. So I've been hacking away at this for the entire day, honestly, to get all squared away. 
all the wires here are ran. I have to go back through, like I said, the big point that I had with the uh, taking all the wires out and wiring them individually here and then putting them back in is because it gives you another step of validation of making sure the wires going to the correct pins. So what I found was that I actually had miswired several of these to the wrong spot. Uh, I think it was like three of them or actually I'm looking right here. I got four of them. From Miss Wired, I had to undo them. I had to cut them up, uh, cut them off, or you know, cut the shrink off, desolder them, and pull them off, and put them back on the right pin. So, luckily, I caught those things. Because if I didn't, I would have had a major issue, and I have the major headache trying to figure it out. But what I did was went back through, validated it, so just to kind of see, guys, so you guys understand. What I did was, as I went through each pin and put them back in, I marked an X to them, and if I missed it, I put a circle beside it, so I know which pins that I had to go back through. And I marked them all with X's here, so then I double checked them, and then when I went back through, I saw the D13. D15 or D17 and D19, D20 were actually wired incorrectly. D19, D20 was a five volt output to all the sensors, which is a pretty major thing if you miss it and your sensors would work. Um, and that would be a very big headache. D13 was the ECT and D17, which is actually there was the map sensor. So that's obviously another major one that would be an issue if it didn't go in correctly. So that method of validation worked really well. I've actually gone ahead and zip tied these together. As you can, guys can see, some links are a little bit funky. So it made it do this little, this curve. If someone knows a tip for this, I would love to hear it because I have no idea. Like I said, this is my first time ever doing something like this. So just trying to figure it all out. But I got this thing all set up here. The only thing we need left to do then is wire the VTEC, which I have set up right here. Um, so we're going to have to actually wire a relay here that's actually activated via 12 volt. Um, I'm going to ask some questions to some people to see 100% how to do this 100%. But once I know, I'm going to add that to the video right here. Okay, guys. So now we have here this one wire left. This one I've left over. I just want to do this one specific so you guys can understand some more wiring basic stuff. Um, so right now we're going to wire the VTEC solenoid. If you don't have a VTEC car, you're done. You can go plug this in the car and go to the next step, which would be setting up the base up and running. But since we have a VTEC car here, we're going to just have to wire the VTEC up to the solenoid. So on the Elite 550, Elite 550 actually only has low side outputs. That means that it can only send a ground signal, it cannot send a 12 volt signal. On the other hand though, the VTEC solenoid activates on a 12 volt signal. It has to send power to the solenoid actually to lock the rockers and run the VTEC. So because we can only send ground, we have to convert this ground signal to a 12 volt power signal. So what we're gonna use is a relay. Now, I'm sure some of you guys know what a relay is, some of you guys don't, so I'm gonna try to break it down for the simplest people. A relay allows you, it's just an electronically controlled switch. So long story short, there's gonna be a ground and a power on one side, and that's gonna be your switch. Once the, the circuit completes, what it does is it activates the switch, and it then sends power through the other way. So what we're gonna have here, guys, on this one is a switch right here. So the switch can have a ground. The ground's gonna come from the ECU because like I said, the ECU sends ground. So the ground's gonna come from the ECU. The 12 volt's gonna come from a battery switch and put it to 12 volt power. Then so that's the out there, that's your switch. That's what's gonna activate the relay. So when the ECU sends ground, it'll complete the circuit and that'll flip the switch. So on this side, we'll have a 12 volt input going into the ECU. So that's gonna come from the battery. And then this side here is not gonna be activated until the switch is activated. So that's gonna send 12 volt power out of here. So you have 12 volt input, 12 volt output, and then you have a switched input for power and then a switched input for ground. And what that'll do is that'll, those will power the switch side. So what we're gonna do is wire the ECU up. So the ECU is gonna be on the ground side here. We're gonna wire the ground to the ground side of the relay. We're gonna wire 12 volt to the 12 volt switch part of the relay. And we're probably gonna have the same 12 volt to the 12 volt out input power side. And then the output is gonna go to the VTEC. So let's go ahead and do that and get to it. So because I already ran these wires, I mean, ideally you would do this separately, but I'm gonna do it with it already on here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna splice basically the relay in the middle of these two wires here. So what I'm gonna do here is gonna find a good length here. I'm gonna cut right in the middle. Wires are cut. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run the crimp on one of these here. I'm gonna crimp it on the here. I'm gonna run that to the ground side, which I'll have the, the, the diagram here on the, uh, on the actual guide if you read it. So we're gonna actually wire it up here, the ground side here. We're gonna wire the other side, this side here, which is gonna be the actual output, um, to the actual pin on the harness side over here. So we'll do that, and then this will go to the output side, and then we'll run 12 volt, probably honestly off the battery power, which is pin A26 on the 550. We're gonna splice that, and then splice out the two more, and then run those to here and here, and then that should be it. So let's go ahead and get that done. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the splice here. Um, if you look inside the splice, it should be a little thingy there. So you look inside the splice, guys, there'll be like a little spot there. I don't know if you guys can see it. There'll be a little, on the top side, there'll be uh, a little split in the O. What you wanna do is when you crimp these down, is you're gonna want the actual, that O splice there to actually sit on the on the tang or whatever thing that pushes down. If you guys will look at the way I have the scrimper set. The O there, you want the, this thing right here to be pushing down on where the O actually splits, because what it's gonna do is when the wire goes down like that, where the O sits like that, when the wire goes down, it's gonna go like that and pull down onto the wire. So, 
little tip for you guys wanting the splice wires or whatever. We're gonna put this in here. It's in there all the way, and then crimp her down. Ooh. That one's crimped in there. A little rough, but it'll do for now. And then uh, go on to the next one. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and this is gonna be the VTEC output wire. Like I said, I've cut this one in half. So I'm gonna run the relay, it's gonna be roughly right here. I'm gonna run the other side, which is gonna be the VTEC output, the one that actually goes to the harness. We're gonna actually run that one here. So I'm gonna splice this one right here. Maybe a little bit longer, actually, sorry. Okay, that one's gonna be good. I'm splice this side too over here. Cool. So we got that, same thing. I'm gonna slide this bad boy in here. Do you want the wire to come out of the edge of the thing itself? And like I said, you're looking for the tang on the O, or whatever it's called. I don't know what the actual technical term is for it, though. Put that on there, and then we're gonna crush it. It's in there good, nice and tight. So we got two. So this is gonna be our VTEC, VTEC output. It's gonna be input, the ground, the signal. So now what we need to do is we're gonna have to splice the power, run two off the power, and then we're gonna terminate those with also Two of these as well, so it's gonna be your power input, or the power, the actual power input for the output for the VTEC. That's gonna be our switched power. So we're gonna get those both running right now. What I'm gonna do is splice it out of this one right here, and then uh, once that's set, we'll get to the next step. I just wanna reemphasize again, while I'm doing this real quick, we're gonna go to here. So the ECU power I know, just from knowing the pin on these ECUs, is 26. So if you look at the back of the actual connector here, there'll be 26 to be this bottom left-hand corner one. On the actual Haltec harness, it's actually uh, blue and red. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna run that off of here. So I'm gonna pull A26 out of here. And what I'm gonna do is run a splice in the middle of A26. I'm just gonna in the middle of this power here. And then what I'm gonna do is from there, I'm going to get some more wire and then I'm gonna splice that into the relay itself. And then that'll be good. So let's go ahead and get that done. Actually, for this one, instead of using solder, I'm gonna use a different technique. I'm gonna use an open barrel splice. See, that's the other thing. It's a little bit different setup. I've never done it before. I've wanted to do one for a while, but I've got all these, these splices here, and I've also got a ratcheting set of crimpers. Um, but the same way that we've done the other ones with the soldering, where you soldered in line, you can solder these here. But for this one, I'm actually gonna do an open barrel splice because I'm just, I just wanna see how it looks. So I'm gonna try one of those real quick, guys. And then uh, we'll try that out. All right. Did I make a stupid mistake? Yes, so that's why there's an abrupt cut. But basically what you guys can see here is that I've actually wired this. I actually have two inputs off of here. The reason I'm being, because I'm gonna be running the wide band as well, the WB1. So if you're on a WB1, the Haltech wide band, which I highly suggest that you do, um, usually we splice off the A26, so I have two now power outputs coming off the 12 volt. You can't put a ton of things on here, so don't think you can load this up. Um, but I can run the VTEC and the wide band off this wire without running having any issues. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna splice this wire in the two, I'm gonna have this one ready for the wide band. Obviously this one has an all wire wide band and afterwards. I'm gonna splice this in the two just so we can do 12 volts. So we're gonna split the 12 volt power signal and the 12 volt uh, the, the 12 volt input for the relay here right now. And then once that's done, we'll be able to connect the relay up. And uh, once then after that, the, the VTEC's actually wired up. All right, you guys. So we've got the relay here. A little bit funky, but it is what it is. I'm just trying to make a functional example and then I'll clean up and make another one afterwards. This is my very first attempt. So maybe not the best idea to film my first attempt, but it is what it is. Um, so what we've got here, guys, is I've got this wire split in the three off the A26 power. This power then splits into two wires. So these two wires here split into the 30 slot and the 86 slot right here. So these are your two powers. So one of these will actually be the power for the switch. The other one is the power input for what's gonna be output out of this wire. Now this one across from this one goes to the VTEC solenoid. This is what's gonna send 12 volt power to the VTEC. And this one right here is the 80, what's this one? 80, 85, the 85 pins will be one from the ECU. That's the signal from the ECU, which is gonna send ground, which is gonna complete the circuit between these two. And it's gonna send power from here to here. So I'm gonna run this one now to the actual ECU itself and go from there. Like I said, this could be a lot cleaner. Uh, I'm just trying to get a working example going. You can see they kind of, this is weird loop shit. More prior planning, which is honestly what I, that's the, the biggest lesson I'm learning here is that the biggest part of wiring is putting a ton of planning in action. I'm just kind of doing this on the fly by the seat of my pants. So you guys can kind of see, um, you know, everyone makes mistakes. And like I said, this is the first time ever. So I'm, I want to just reiterate again, if I can do this, 
anyone can do this. So what I'm gonna do now is finish up the final one and get that one all squared away. So I'm gonna actually, I have it already tinned. I have a wire tinned already right here. So I'm just gonna add this final wire here. It's gonna go A2 for the VTEC clonoid. I'm gonna wire that in and after that, we're gonna plug it in the car, make sure it doesn't catch on fire and burn the car to the ground. We'll load a base map up and we'll try to start the car. So let's go ahead and see if we can uh, get this one wired up. Heat shrink on there again. Let's heat this thing back up and get this back on here. Start shimmering. There she goes. There she goes. She started back on there. Pen's good. Slide the heat shrink back on just like that. And now we're going to heat the heat shrink up. Ideally with a heat gun, but it is what it is. I don't know if everyone has a heat gun for this kind of application. Oof. There we go. Heat tech is now wired up. Now that we've got all this stuff wired up, I will we'll do a final visual inspection to make sure none of these pins are touching because if they do, that's gonna be an issue. I'm gonna go through every single one of these pins and double check. And then once I know that these are all set up, plug it in the computer and if everything is going the exact way, I'm actually gonna cut all the remaining pins off just to reduce the risk of actually catching fire or anything grounding out the way that it shouldn't be. And then from there, I'm gonna have to pop this. I'm still working on how to do that. I'm not 100% sure. If you guys have an idea, leave a suggestion down below. We need to add a strain relief for these that way they don't you know, bend and things like that. So. I'm thinking silicone, like RTV or something, to actually hold them in. I know most people use like epoxy, but I'm trying to think of the budget option for somebody. If you guys have a suggestion for potting this, um, let me know in the comments down below. But let's go ahead and uh, let's put this thing in the car and see what she does. All right, you guys, so I've been going crazy over this. So um, I've had to do a lot of modifications. I've actually put this on the car and started it um, and made sure everything was right and correct. So everything's good here. So we have the relay right here. Like I said, I'll put the pin out for the relay up on the thing. We have the signal switch. Um, signal ground, and then you have 12 volt input, and then the output to the VTEC, which that'll output 12 volt to the VTEC. I've checked it, works, everything's correct. I've also added the Haltech wideband O2 to it as well. I use the uh, CAN connector. I'll make maybe a video for that if you guys are interested in learning how to do that, but that's not really relevant for this one, but it is important for this car we're gonna do. Um, but basically run the CAN high, CAN low into the ECU, um, and then you can actually splice, once again, the power from the ECU, and then the ground from the ECU. So I have those splice in here. So it looks a bit weird with some of these things here, but, Gonna got that in there. What I'm gonna do now is since I've actually gone ahead and tested this and fired it in the car and make sure it works, I'm gonna cut the pins off of here and then what I'm gonna do is strain relief it, but I'm gonna use hot glue for this. I'm gonna hot glue all these pins here. That way the pins will be good for flex. They won't they won't mess up when it flexes. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and cut all these pins out. Once they're cut out, we'll be good to go. But before you do this, make sure you plug it in the car, make sure the ECU starts up, and make sure it does everything. So do this step last. I'm gonna do this right now because I've already done it, but I'm gonna show you guys how to plug this in, make sure everything works and go through the ECU and set it up. So we'll get to it. Okay, so all the pins here are now cut. I'm gonna go ahead and wait till my hot glue gun heats up and then I'm going to go ahead and secure all these wires to here because this is the final placement. Before you secure these, make sure you have the final placement 100% verified, so like I said, plug it in, follow the next step here, and then uh, we're gonna go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these things all glued in here. It's for strain relief, and then to make sure, you know, we don't get any shorts or arcs or anything. But after that, we'll be good to go. And then that'll be it. She'll be ready to go, and then we'll go to the base map making stage. That'll be in the next video. I'll show you guys how to set up the base map, and we'll put on the dyno, and then tune the car. All right, you guys, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this hot glue gun, you guys can maybe already see. I'm gonna go ahead and glue gun all of these to here to make sure it doesn't move under vibration or stress. Um, typically it's done with epoxy, um, but the glue gun's what I got right now, and it's, I think a lot of people probably have a hot glue gun, so it's really cheap to do. We're just gonna lock all these wires in place, that way vibration doesn't cause them to break apart. Um, and go from there, so I'm just gonna put just a ton of glue on here, just glob them all together, um, just to make sure they're all solidified in place. And once they're all in place, we go. like I said, normally people use, it looks like epoxy, it's called, this is called back potting, or potting the harness. Epoxy is the best solution here but this is in a budget, like I said, so I think this is gonna be the best option for most people. I'm just gonna glue all these things in here. Glue these wires on here. Make sure you get a good layer on there, and then once they're all glued, should be good to go. So, get us all secured up, and that'll be it. Right. 
there it is. Not the prettiest, but uh, all these wires are now locked in so we don't get any weird grounds or shorts. Just important, this is a very important part. Once your things are completely locked in, you know these are the spots that's gonna go. Don't do that until afterwards, otherwise you're gonna have a whole mess to clean up. So be sure you get all this on afterwards. But like I said, I've already gone ahead and verified this all works correctly, so we're set set there. So from that, now ready to plug this thing in the car and call the final setup, and that's it. So there we go, guys. Thank you guys for watching, um, and that's it. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. So and that's what we got for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know there's a lot of stuff going on. I just want to say and reiterate, it's the first time doing this. I'm just doing this to kind of show you guys, like, anyone can do this. Um, you can spend your time, as long as you spend time doing it. It took me about a day. Honestly, I'd probably do it a lot faster now. And with the tips I'm going to leave in our tech article, it'll be in the comments below. Um, I think you can do it a lot faster and a lot better than I did this first time. But, um, you know, you can kind of see how it all works. These are all the wires. It looks a lot more complicated than it is once you get into it. It's not super bad. And then you learn a ton, a ton of skills. You learn about exactly how the EC works once you take on this project yourself. I highly encourage you guys to do it. Um, and like I said, if you guys actually do wire stuff, I'm sure this will be someone watching here. Don't laugh because, like I said, super new. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them because I, I would like to get better at this and learn it more. Um, and any, any insight you guys can give me, I'd really appreciate it. But we got this thing working. Fires up the car, runs and drives. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and single this up. But be sure to check out the next video for setting up the base map and starting the car. And uh, we'll get that going. So I appreciate you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.